My friends, watching this little video presentation, and it's all about dreams. You can live your dreams with your head in the clouds, but it's better to die with the memories. Imagine yourself right now being in a nightclub. Someone is drinking, someone is there with his girlfriend. Everybody, someone is trying to show off his wealth. And there is a huge chaos. There's a loud music. And right now, the reality is that you are sitting in silence in this hall because the purpose of being here is the same. In the nightclub, everybody had the purpose which was completely varied, the energy varied, and therefore, when you're focused and you pay attention to what you want to do in life, there is nothing that can stop you from growing. Uh, football ground, does it sound familiar? 11 players on each side and there are few players with the centre, few forwards and there are a couple of strikers. Now, nobody designated, designated them to be the strikers but there is only one Pele and one Roberto Baggio and blah blah blah. The rest of the players kick the ball, ball keeps coming back to them, they spend their life Nobody knows their names. So, you have to take the risk. You are in the center. The ball comes to you. The risk you are going to take now is to kick the ball, take it all the way from the center to the goal post. You miss, you are out of the team. Your career is finished. You kick the goal there, you are the next player. Or carry on. So, what do you want to be? Whoever sitting here, looking at starting a, looking at a startup, if you don't have the capacity to take the risk, hello, there is something that's going. If you don't have the capability to take the risk, get out of here, take up a job, be happy for the rest of your life. I mean, whoever I speak to, who wants to do a startup, they always say we don't have money. Let me tell you, money is available in plenty. It's your attitude, it's your approach that will get you there. One of the reasons why I'm here today is I was sitting in a forum of about 20 artists. They were all veterans and I was a new artist on the block. This is about in 2008. And there was one artist who was about 84 year old in 2008, must be 90 now, a veteran, a renowned artist. And he opened his briefcase and he pulled out a few invitation cards. And he said, I receive these kind of cards from every day from these young artists who doesn't know what they're doing. Believe me, that pissed me off. Because that man got his recognition at the age of 75. And he was an artist from the age of 20, I'm sure. So people will not look at you, not respect you because you are a startup or you want to begin your career. Don't worry. Don't bother. Come with an attitude. Be sure of what you want to do. Have conviction in what you are going to do and investors will come to you. Let me share my experience. I graduated from FIT New York and I had a choice to live in US or go back to Bombay and set up my own business. I always thought I wanted to be a businessman. So come to Bombay. I have a friend, very familiar story, we all go through. And this friend of mine says, okay, do, let's do something together. My dad was an influential man. So with his influence, we set up a company with an investment of about 12 lakhs. 
and my friend on the day one when I started the company, he cheated. I didn't like what he did. And I walked out of that company. And I was depressed for about three minutes or ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, because I had to give up. My, do my dad wrote me off. He said, this man is, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing kind of a thing. Anyway, I told him, I want to do something, so I have to get some. So he introduced me to, he said, okay, I'm fixing up, and when it's so-and-so, go and meet him. That was 12th September, 1984. So I have coffee with this gentleman, one Mr. Singhania. And coffee turns into positive note after 40 minutes. And he says, you have begun working with me from yesterday basis. So he tells me, what's the name of your company? I do tell him right there and then. And he says, I'm sure your dad must have told you that this kind of business that you're getting into requires an investment of about 30 lakhs in 1984, 12th September, he tells me this. I go back, yeah, yeah, I said, yeah, my dad told me that. And he agreed to, he told me he'll give me 30 lakhs. I know my dad would not give me a penny. I used to be a gambler. I used to go to races. I used to play cards. You know what I mean? My dad was a scientist. And I don't think he had that kind of money in his pocket to give it to me. Okay? Because he had four other siblings. Cut two, I go to my dad. I tell him, this is what he told me. He said, I can give you one lakh twenty-five thousand. You too. He wrote a check. But with his blessings, I can tell you that. One lakh twenty-five thousand rupees check I take. Now I'm thinking what to do next. I go to the bank outside my building, my society where I lived. I walk into the bank and I tell the manager, I'm giving you one lakh. You give me nine lakhs more. Ten percent I'm giving, I need ten lakhs. Normal. So the manager tells me that my limit, I can only go up to 5 lakhs. If I go beyond that, then the file has to go to the regional office. My power in this branch is so much. So I said, I have two companies on the spot. 50,000, 50,000, Joyce and Reddit, Mukti Fibers. To my son and my daughter's name. Company formed, 4.5 lakh, 4.5 lakh, I had 10 lakhs, 25,000 I gave it to the bank manager. I am not subscribing to corruption. I am serious. I am serious about it. Okay? Because my life has taught me that if you go for corruption, you ruin your life, you ruin your career, you are not going to make it big. You will make it big, you will enjoy your money. There are two ways of riding a Rolls Royce. What are the two ways? No. In both the cases you can sit ahead. It's sit in front, I'll tell you how. Either you buy one, or you find a friend who has one. <laughs> Ride is the same. The right in both the cases is going to be the same. There is not going to be any difference. But, you know why we want to own a Rolls Royce? What is the joy? Guess. You want to show off. There is no other reason behind. So when you go to an investor, an investor puts faith in you and he puts money on your business, the day you get that first one crore or five crores, you know what you end up doing? You went to his office on a bike, next time you're going in Maruti. Don't ever do that. If I give anyone here 1,000 rupees, I'm watching him till he walks out of the exit door. What is he going to do with my thousand bucks? The man is watching you. His money is very important to him. Don't take it for granted. So continue to go on a bike, but if you have to go wearing a jacket and you can't go on a bike, take an Ola. Spend the money, you can write it off against expenses in your business that you earn the money from. Do not spend 
that money on your personal leisure or whatever you may call it. And in the name of entertaining friends that I spend, I have a bill of 12,000 rupees in a nightclub or a pub. Don't ever do that. Believe me, if I'm an investor, I'm watching you. I know where you're going. I know what you're doing. So be very careful when you touch someone else's money. Every penny that you spend. Be focused. Have your conviction in your product, in your business, if you want to grow. Otherwise, you will not grow. Now I'm cutting to my success in the business that I started in 1984 it was excellent. But I was a gambler. I lost a lot of money doing some because you know what? I was not focused. I said I can do this also, that also, some other business, that other business, and I lost some money. In 1994, 1992, I'm left with some odd 30-40 lakh rupees. That much. So I say, that was the Harshad Mehta time. So I said, I have to go public. I have to make my company a listed company on the stock market. And I said, I have 10, 15 lakhs at stake to put in and make my company a public limited company. So what I did is what you're supposed to do now. I went to a small financial capital company and I told him, this is my product and I want to go make it a public limited company. He gave me 200 questions. I prepared the answers of 200 questions. I didn't go back to him. I went to another company. And I said, I have these papers ready with 200 answers, whatever that, I prepared the papers, that I know so much, you know, and I have money to invest, and let's go public. So he gives me 25 questions. So I take that and I walk out, I don't go back to it. I landed finally at, in 1992, 90, this was in 94, 93, I landed finally in SBI Capital Market, that was one of the biggest State Bank of India Capitals was a big financial for public uh, to food uh, and lead managers. I land up there and they take two months spending time on my papers and finally they reject my proposal. Super. So what next? So I walk onto the Italian marble of ILFS, Infrastructure Leasing and Financial Services. Biggest company. And I sell them my story, and my company becomes listed on 16th August 1994. And what happens? Seven times, seven times oversubscribed. And I, my startup, my business, I began. Fantastic story. So, I'm riding a quest. And I am telling you, I was, I was, I had reached a point from there, I had to just be, in the next 10 days, I would be the largest company in Bombay, in my business. But, life has some other plans for me. I was partying in, on a yacht, and my office calls me at about 9 o'clock. Sir, there is fire in the company. Aag lagi hai. Jaldi aao. Mene kaya, aag buja do. You know, I took it lightly. They called me 15 minutes later. They said, sir, it's a very serious matter. Aap abhi baak ke aayye. So I came and ran. Finally, I reached my plant. There were 18 fire brigades. Company was destroyed in fire by 6 o'clock in the morning. To ground as she's like, World Trade Center. And I was like, depressed. Once again, genuinely depressed. Honestly. Those cops, there were fire brigades, they were all on my case. Ki, you have set the fire for insurance money. Various 
kind of, you know, things come across. You come across a lot of problems. And when your mind is weak, you find it a big problem. But if your mind is balanced, you take it as a challenge. And if your mind is strong, you take it as an opportunity. So, as life would have it, I had about 400 people working in my company. And that was Saturday night. On Monday morning, all the people come to work. Sunday was a holiday. And the there is nothing. The building is destroyed, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I told them, you all go home. 40 of you stay back, and we'll reconstruct the company, and we'll start the factory in six months. Blah, blah, blah. Now the insurance company doesn't give me the money for next one year. Now what to do next? The beautiful thing is Google. So I went on Google and I saw one company in the same business as mine, listed on NASDAQ, $900 million company. The name of the managing director and the company's phone numbers were written there. Pick up the phone, I call up. The company is in Israel. So I call up, the set, some lady picks up and I said, I would like to speak to Mr. Eaton. He says, who are you? I said, I'm calling from India and at two minutes of his time, he says, I'm sorry, he will not come on the phone, but I will ask him, you call back in the afternoon. And I called back in the afternoon and he came on the phone and I said, Sir, I would like to come and meet you. I just need half an hour of your time. Give me the date and time. So he told me 8.30, 21st December, you are in my office. So I'm in his office at 8.30 in the morning. 10 minutes he's talking. And his last line on his introduction was, you are sitting in a lion's den, so what the hell you want? So it's my turn. So I am the best, I say, I am the king in my business in India, I say. And I go, my presentation, 20 minutes, my time is up. And I tell him my last line, and my company is destroyed in fire. This man lost all his inhibition. He just told me, fuck you, what? <laughs> I said, I'm not here to ask for anything. I'm here to give you something, let's talk. He picked up the phone. Told his secretary, cancel all my appointments till 1.30. I'm having lunch with this gentleman. And he has scored my points. Blah, 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 blah. I made a joint venture with that company. And my company became part of the largest company in the world in my business. Story doesn't end. The story begins from here. So after three years, 2003 is the time when I met him. 2004, I signed the LOI on the 2nd of April. Now he tells me one more line. I think I'd like to share this, that you're in the right place at the right time. They had bought a, bought a plant in US, a company in US, which had a plant in Ireland. And that plant was idle because Ireland is part of Europe at that point. And it was too expensive to run that plant. So he said, why don't you... I said, I'll take that plant to India because they were supposed to transfer that plant to Turkey. I said, I'll take it to India. Believe me, there is no shortcuts in life. It's only hard work. I constructed a building of 80,000 square feet. First phase, 40,000 square feet. Second April, I started. LOI assigned. I identified a place in Silva. So I did everything. I went to Ireland. I picked up 50, 60 containers of machinery. I had no money. I owed money to my bank, but I didn't own much money. And I always believe never to overtrade. Don't overtrade. Don't be too ambitious. When time comes bad, you're finished. One minute it takes to bring you back to square one, scratch. So always plan your business. Every Every day you sit and plan. Every day you sit and plan. Whatever thoughts come to your mind, write it down on a piece of paper. 
The minute you read them, you'll get the answers. This is useless, frivolous thought. Discard it. I started my plant in eight months flat with the building ready, 2nd December. I had eight people from Israel parting in my plant and we had inaugurated the plant. It was, well, they called me a magician. But this, I was sitting there. And I had not received the money from my insurance company. And that is the New India Assurance Company. Why I'm mentioning the name? I have nothing against them. Because they paid me through the nose in the end. Now I am sharing this with you. So finally, 2006, uh, okay, before I go to the insurance aspect of it. So then, these Israeli people, Marks and Spencer walks into my plant and he tells, the CFO of this company in front of me, that this is one of your best plant in all your nine plants in the world. Guess what? In 10 days, the CFO tells me, Suketu, you, don't you think we are going a little slow? We would like to take over the operations. That means they want to take over the company. And I'm out of the company. Is it done? without blinking an eye. They didn't know I had seen the fire. It didn't matter to me. From the fire I learnt. <laughs> From the fire I had learnt one most important thing which I would like you to put it on your hand like this. <laughs> whatever business you do, whatever work you do, is only a medium to earn money. Most important in your life is money, not business. Business is only a medium. Please remember my line. Why I am sharing this with you? It's my experience. I tell you, you will all agree with me. Somebody will say, no, no, I believe in my passion. What this man is talking bullshit. But I'll tell you, on your deathbed, this now you, you look into this, on your deathbed, if somebody comes and says, I'm giving you a check of 10 lakhs, can you just put your signature, your hand nail, but you will sign it. On the deathbed you want to receive that 10 lakhs. So what I'm saying now, please accept it on face value. Don't contest it. And whoever will, will become successful, for sure. Others will also, but will take more time. So don't be, don't fall in love with your business. Fire can happen. <laughs> I had put... I had put white marble on the floor so that if any oil stains or anything comes, no? I can see it and I can crack the whip on my worker. That was my passion when I built the plant and the fire took place. Now what I'm going to tell you... So 2006, these Jews get greedy. So, and the business is in the world at the peak. All the economies of the world is a fantastic, right on top. So they ask me if they can take over operations. I say without blinking an eye, honestly, done. Let's talk about the numbers. So the number game begins, three months, four months, and we close the numbers. I took advice from whoever and they said, if this is the number, you're fine, take it and go on. So I took the numbers, I handed over the plan to them. There was a non-compete that I can't get into the same business for three years. So they paid me some six, eight thousand dollars a month as a salary to sit at home and not come to that business. I was very happy to do that. <laughs> so the missing link here is, I will now share with you the insurance part. So the insurance company, this is a very interesting uh, what I am going to share with you. And this, everybody who is sitting here, whoever, whatever little business that you set up or whatever large business that you set up, 
never compromise on taking an insurance policy or I'm sorry about the premium. Pay the highest premium but take an insurance which is covers your everything. I had taken it because I was in when I used to work, I used to finish I'm very meticulous. I used to finish my work in two hours and then I have nothing to do in the office. So when the insurance agent came to meet me, I said explain. And I spent one week, two weeks talking to him. Finally I made a decision that I will take an insurance at the market value of the plant and machinery. And I listed that I had 16 telephones in my company. I had so many computers. Not that I understand. I did it without understanding it. But I'm explaining you to please understand and do it. So he's telling me, nobody does this. I said, I mean, I want to do it. I had a loft. So I said, loft? The I beams of the loft? That is the value of X amount. I took an insurance like this. Now the fire takes place. The surveyor comes and the insurance company says that you have set the fire. Because before that, I had paid off my state bank every penny. I had settled my account. So I had no liabilities. My insurance policy was in my company's name. It was not mortgaged to any bank. So they appoint and after the surveyor does his survey and he approves my money, they appoint an investigating agency. They have another wing, which is some independent investigators and they came, they interrogated my staff independently, me, my, everybody. And finally they made a 29 page report and they told me, you are a clean man, you have not done anything wrong and now we will guide you if you want how to get money out of the insurance company. <laughs> because they became my friends. Because they saw my honesty and my sincerity. It was nothing else. They didn't take a single penny. I could not have dared to offer. Otherwise, I would have been tack. Nothing received. Couldn't do. So, 2006, finally, they pay me. But they pay me on a crore of rupees insurance, crores of rupees, they pay me a small amount of 8 lakh rupees less. The last minute, some idiot joker sitting on that chair said, no, the rate of euro was some 50 paisa less or some 10 paisa less on that particular day of fire. So he pays me 8 lakh rupees less. And I invoke the arbitration clause. So I sent them a letter, the insurance company threw it in the garbage. Second time they threw it in the garbage, third time, as per procedure, whatever. Finally, the arbitration clause was invoked. And the arbitration proceedings begin. So I go to my lawyer. I said, I have a case. They appoint Crawford Bailey as the insur uh, as the lawyers. I go to my lawyer and ask him. So he says, Yeah, you do one thing, prepare a file, make a brief, give it to me, and we will do it. I said, Thank you very much. I have not studied law. I told the arbitrators I am fighting my own case. I have no lawyer. Fact of life, true story. So the, uh, the first day, <laughs> you have to take an oath. I said, I am not taking it. <laughs> so the Crawford Bailey says, the lawyer says, then that's it, arbitration proceedings are finished. I mean, you can't go ahead, the game is over. And we have won the case. He's technically wrong, right? So what I tell him? Listen, you explain to me if I'm going technically wrong. Don't try to win on technical grounds. I tell the lawyer of Crawford Bailey. Arbitrators are laughing at me. I asked 210 questions to the insurance company. I prepared. I knew my case. I knew what they did wrong, where they delayed. What had they done? Everything I knew. It was in my head. It was a traumatic experience of my life. Not receiving money. How can I forget? Every day I used to come up. I won arbitration 3-0 in my favor. <laughs> that is the focus. That is the knowledge of your business or your problem or your whatever. You have to be 
right deep into it if you want to be successful so finally i quit my business i hand over the business and i don't know what to do next so my life i must start up today honestly in front of you i was a start up then in 1984 the only difference is i have gained the experience so maybe i'll get the money from an investor faster than you <laughs> <laughs> not necessary if i don't have the right product conviction in what i'm going to do if i now this, this is very important to understand i'm going to share one more little story do 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 you have time yeah five minutes yes. you give me five more five. thank you but this is interesting <laughs> <laughs> hope you guys agree right i'll share a very small incident with you guys very important in somewhere in 1992 or somewhere i don't know when i was doing the yarn business i meet the managing director of a company on a party at a party and i tell him why don't we do business together he said come and meet me in my office tomorrow or whatever day and he says 12 o'clock 12:30 appointment he gave me i said give me an appointment so i reach there at 12:30 sharp is a managing director of a million billion dollar company whatever i'm not as big as him at that keeps me waiting till 12:45 i walk out i go back home or to my office i'm not ready here easier to do business with me so at 2:30 he calls me up because he had become a friend at the party understand he was talking to me so he owed me a call so i said listen i came to your office you're busy your secretary told me you have to wait and you give me a time i respected your time you better respect my time if you want to do business i mean i did, was not that rude i said we must respect each other's time very politely i told him is it okay suketu we meet again on 2 o'clock so and so day i said that believe me i walked in at 2 hours inside his cabin i closed the deal he gave me the business and i walked out of there so if you working with any investor or anywhere you're going to for money if that man has no respect for you now get out of there trust me that means he's only going to waste your time he doesn't he just wants to understand he wants to do his time pass he wants to show he's a big guy because they are all in love with their voice and you will and even if he invest money in you you will never make it big with him because every time you need more money he will से दो महीना वेट करो क्या फर्क पड़ता है डोंट गो विथ सच पीपल गो विथ पीपल हु रिस्पेक्ट यू योर बिजनेस योर टाइम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डोंट सकअप टू एनी बडी एंड यू नो वॉट आफ्टर डिमोनिटाइजेशन बैंक आर फ्लश विथ मनी गो टू द बैंक दे वॉन्ट टू लैंड मनी ऑल द एन पी एज दैट आर एग्जिस्टिंग दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू Uh, restructure the debts they are going to invest into new businesses that's a directive of the government and the banks so all the startups are in a fantastic position to get money from the banks you don't need to go to anybody get a good project make your financials and go to the bank you get your money coming back to the last phase that i am here as a startup so i didn't know what to do after i sold my business and i said to myself let's start painting I became an artist. I never painted before, so I bought a canvas. I became an artist. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Bombay Times page three made me a celebrity artist. <laughs> okay, my painting started selling in one year for seven lakhs, and people after thirty years sell for twenty thousand. Marketing, positioning, very important. <laughs> yeah, that's all I did. I was on page three. People were fed up every day. What you have to see on page three or what? That kind of thing. I said, now what next? Because you can't paint every day to be in the art world. And when I started painting, these bloody old artists who are veterans, they treated me like a struggler. <laughs> There are some new strugglers come as an artist and make, doing his shows. So I became an art curator, and I lined up 42 of those artists. 
and I opened a show for them at Jagirat Gallery. The opening night sale was 70 lakhs. And they were all standing there. I was selling their paintings. You know, that's how you do it. You evolve. You don't change your business. When you change your business, you start all over again. But you evolve in your business, you grow. That is the key. So Krishna said, change is constant because he wanted it at that time. It suited him. <laughs> change is not constant. Constant is most important. Please understand that. Constant is most important. Yes, you evolve. Keep evolving in your business. But don't change your businesses. Don't run here and there. After that I said, I became a numerologist. I'm a regression therapist. I started writing a book. One day I thought, I become a film director. <laughs> so I sat down and wrote a script. And I'm directing my first movie, which is already on the floor. Yeah? I went to one of the veteran director who was a very old friend of mine and I said, listen, I want to become a director. He said, come and sit next to me. So I became a director. Honest, true story. <laughs> so I'm directing my first movie. Okay? And my second script is under process. This is my journey. And today, now I'm going to be at a startup. I'm also looking at investing into startups. But all, because I have a listed company on the Bombay Stock Exchange. So, the, whoever comes as an investor has an exit available. And I am also starting up a new business venture of spiritual center. <laughs> for, we, for that, I will all want you to wish me good luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to me patiently. <laughs>